In 2016, Drumcode released one of the hottest records of the year by Sam Paganini called The Beat. In this sound design tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to create those chords that you hear in the beginning of the track. So the sound that uh, we are going to recreate is from Sam Paganini called uh, The Beat. And you might know this song. Quite a heavy song, uh, but my favorite part is definitely this sound at the beginning. I can already see this in like the Westergaas or one of these big techno clubs where it's dark and sweaty and then these chords come in. It's definitely a goosebump moment. Well, it sounds like this. So that's the one we're going to uh, recreate. Um, for this tutorial, I've used Massive, which is my uh, one of my favorite plugins. But I've uh, just to show you that you don't need Massive to do this, I've recreated the sound in Zebra, Serum, and Silent as well. Uh, the sounds might deviate a little bit because uh, yeah, they all have their own different flavors towards their filters, EQs, delays, uh, reverbs, that kind of stuff within the plugin, but the techniques are the same. So I just included those as well for you to see that uh, the techniques are more important than the plugin. Um, so let's focus on that. And uh, for the rest, um, I think you can do this with any synth or at least most of the synths. So what I've done, I've loaded up uh, a new sound in Massive, which is just uh, your plain old sawtooth and um, what Sam Paganini did in this track, he created um, a C uh, chord, a C sustained fourth, uh, which is uh, a C, a F, and a G. And he transposed that down each time by one. So it sounds like this, or the one here by two and here by two as well. So it sounds like this. But there's uh, quite some um, cool uh, modulation on the on the synth parts, and which is not possible if you keep these notes as is. Uh, you can do that in Bitwig, for example, but in Ableton or in Logic, it's uh, a little bit harder. And I don't want to split up this plugin in different plugins to just to have separate control over uh, the, the the which notes I want to modulate. So what I've done is I've just created this section as a one note. And I've added here a fifth and a seventh, and then you get the, the C sustained fourth note. And I want to do a little bit of uh, detuning on that. So the first effect that really helps recreate the sound is the slowly pitch bending effort that's in there. And you can recreate that with an LFO and you assign it to the root note. We de decrease that by 12 and for the other notes by 24. And again here, I'm also going to detune those sounds a little bit and now you'll hear the effect um, the envelope is put on the the notes that you've put in here and it moves towards this one so now if i um play it you you hear that the sound moves towards a certain direction so for example if i put this all the way up it will move towards this uh, minus 12 and minus 24, so the note will sound very low. And if I put it... In. 
So you hear that the sound moves from the root note towards the octave below, or in this case, from the fifth to the two octaves below that. But what I want is to actually do the opposite and uh, create that it moves only quickly to the down from that downwards perspective back up uh, and down again. So it starts at the root note, goes down and back. So. So that's already uh, sounding, uh, starting to sound a lot like we had. But another thing that's really cool with it is um, if we put a low pass filter on it and have the resonance work in our favor as well. And when you shift, uh, what I like to do is put a velocity on here, uh, which is how you can affect the range that you give with the, the velocity um, effect here based on the velocity of your MIDI notes. So example here, I've created my MIDI notes a little bit different each time. And therefore the filter cutoff will switch to that position relative for this whole spectrum based on your zero to 127. Uh, what is it, 127? Yeah, 127 uh, note position. So it sounds... So that's the second technique that's really important for the sound. Third is we're going to increase the voicing. This is the amount of voices that are played for each oscillator. So in this case, if I put this on two, it will have six voices playing uh, for each oscillator too. But I want to spread them to the left and to the right. So now it sounds like uh, like this. But if I move this slider to the left now, these voices will be spread on the left and the right, and it will sound like this. And as you can hear, and here I'll do something on the pitch cutoff as well. Yeah, it gives it a way better stereo perspective. So that is important. And the third part is, uh, well, it's not that special. It's just uh, uh, a little bit of uh, delay here. Let's put it on uh, eight here, a little bit of feedback. And let's do that as well for uh, some reverb. So now it sounds almost there. But what I like a lot is if you hear the, if you go back to the sound, you can hear that once the note is playing at the end, there's a little bit of tremolo on the, on the note. We can do that too. So if you load up uh, initial sound, Fabretto will be linked to it already. So that's here. So. But we want to control that ourselves a little bit better. So. I'm going to link this to an envelope as well. So in this case, put it pretty full. Velocity up. So as you can see now, the sound is directly tremoloing. And I want to slowly bring that in.
Now it's obviously too much, so we're gonna bring that level down as well. Quite a lot. And uh, that is uh, basically it, how you get the sound. I've um, created it here as well. Let's see, this was what I did before, so... Yeah, this one sounds even better, I think. And yeah, it's all dependent on the, the, the DK velocity type that you... Uh, uh, the DK value that you put in here combined with the, the velocity effect a little bit of detuning on your notes um also here at the pitch level so yeah I, i've done them in a bit different here the other way but you you get uh, you catch my drift a little bit of rest resonance i did here so maybe that is one of the the reasons why it's different and for the rest um yeah i had basically the same uh so to repeat, it's get these chords in their 0, 5th, and 7th. So you have a, a sustained 4th. Put the envelopes on the octaves below there and with a, with a and control that with the DK. So you get that nice gliding effect. And put a, a velocity effect or velocity control on your filter cutoff with a little bit of resonance. Make sure your sound is panning enough. Uh, with the unison up and put some decay and some, uh, some delay and some reverb on there and just to show you you can do this in other synths as well is uh, here i've done it in zebra as well by yui a very good plugin developer and this is actually if you actually want to create your own synthesizers because because you can have all these parts that massive also has but i just build it in here so i've created three oscillators all three of them are saw waves, just like we had before. Dual with a, a little bit of uh, where I increase the width. So dual. So that is our unison part that we had in the in the other one as well. Um, again, here the tuning of oscillator one at zero, two at five, seven. Uh, a little bit of detuning on there as well, and then uh, connect a second envelope where we also play around with that decay effect. Um, so where, where so you hear that, that pitch bend part. And as you can hear, it almost sounds exactly the, the same because yeah, we use the same principles. Um, I've connected here an, uh, an LFO to, uh, oh yeah, so here, this is the filter with the velocity effect uh, control on there where I control the, the filter cutoff with the resonance. Uh, and here is maybe one of the things where the difference in sound comes from. Here I selected a, a vintage uh, filter, but you can take any of these and uh, create something to your own liking. But that is one of the differences why plugins sound different, the way they use their filters or their oscillators. Uh, and lastly, the, the tremolo effect I've uh, done here on... Um, let me see, where did I do that? Yeah, here on the panning of the oscillators, I've um, linked them to LFO2 and the amplitude of this LFO, I've linked again to uh, envelope three where I had a very long attack. So it took a little bit of time before the effect starts to pan. And here I've uh, added some delays, fourth and eighth delay and a reverb as well. And um, well, I've done this in Serum as well. It's one of my favorite plugins. And if you're going to start out, I would definitely recommend actually starting with Serum. But uh, Serum doesn't have three oscillators. So I had to uh, split them up in two sections. Um, you can also use the sub control, I know, but I don't, I don't think we can link this to pitch modulation. So therefore this way is a little bit... Um, weirder than I would normally do to split the plugin up in two sections just to create one sound. But um, I just wanted to show you how to do it in Serum. Again, here the unison up top. Uh, I've uh, pitched it uh, from zero, five, and seven. 
um, I've linked the LFOs, uh, the envelopes too, with that decay effect on the glide. Put it here. So here it moves from one octave down. Here it moves 24. So two octaves and here also 24. Uh, you have to do the same settings because you won't have the same envelopes on your sound. And again, here on the on the filter, I've linked the velocity control uh, that's here, sorry, here, uh, with the resonance and the, the cutoff. And if you play them together, let me select the right ones. And I've uh, added some uh, delay and some reverb on it with a different plugin. This time this is from Sound Toys, but just so you get the ID. And I've also done it in Silent, which is a very popular plugin among starting producers because it's very simple and uh, clearly laid out, which is uh, one of the things that I really like about it, actually. Um, so here I've done the same for section A, I've uh, created saw wave, two voices, detuned them a little bit and put them on uh, on the root note. And here I've linked the modulation envelope to the pitch of field of uh, of A, so this section, because this one goes down only one octave and the other section goes down two octaves. So if you go here and you put the envelope destination to one, you get exactly one chord. So I uh, mean one octave. So it goes down and back, just like we did in the other plugins. And the same here for part two, I did a fifth and a seventh, detuned it a little bit, put some uh, reverb, some decay on it, some, uh, here's some velocity cutoff uh, on the, our filter with the resonance. And here is our tremolo effect, which you have to automate because I was running out of uh, envelopes, but uh, it sounds like this. So, uh, and from all these plugins, I must say though, my uh, my first one in Massive is my favorite, the sound. But um, like I said, you can do it in all these plugins. So it's more about the techniques that we've used to, to recreate the sound. And now you can put them in your own sounds and work with them and create own cool melodies and stuff. So I hope you like it. Make sure also to follow some Paganini on uh, Spotify or on Beatport. Make sure to check his music out. Really, really inspiring stuff. So that was it for today. If you have any other tutorials you would like to see, hit me up. And also let me know in the comments below what is your favorite plugin. So maybe I can use that next time when I show you a sound design tutorial. So, okay, see you next time. Hey, thank you for watching. I hope you liked the video. If you want to see more, make sure to subscribe. And if you want to check out my music, make sure to follow me on one of these handles. Until then, I'll see you next time.